Hello, uh, welcome to this KNX experience session, um, ETS Insight uh, live demo. My name is Jesus Arias. Uh, I provide support to and guidance to organizations that want to join the KNX association and develop uh, KNX uh, solutions. Today, we are carrying out a live demo of the ETS Inside server. Um, questions and answers will be answered at the end of the presentation. In my previous session, uh, I showcased the KNX ecosystem. Uh, it's a very vast ecosystem for developers and system integrators. Within tools for system integrators, I named the ETS Insight, which is one of the newest tools from KNX uh, Association. Mm, and which targets installers and uh, even uh, do-it-yourself uh, people by lowering the skills uh, threshold required to accomplish a KNX uh, installation from design to uh, commissioning in the spectrum of small to small medium uh, size projects, like for instance, an apartment. For those who uh, have never seen this tool in action, this is the perfect uh, presentation. So this is the right show. So without further ado, I introduce our uh, guest speakers. On one hand, we have uh, Stefan Meinka, a business developer at BAB Technology. Hi, Stefan. Hi there. And uh, on the other hand, we have uh, Jörg Eschke, a KNX tutor at JE Smart Solutions, who also uh, cooperates on a regular basis with BAB uh, technology. So they are going to showcase what the ETS Insight can do. For uh, this demo, uh, BAB technology is using their app module KNX, uh, which is one of the uh, one of the products found in the portfolio, and which is uh, the first uh, ETS Insight server in the market. So before we uh, continue with a, a live demo, uh, I would like to ask uh, Stefan, uh, what was the motivation for BAB Technology to develop uh, the first ETS Insight server in the market? So uh, we've been uh, asked by uh, system integrators and also end customers uh, that they want to um, modify um, their their smart homes um, in a in a yeah way that they can handle without using the ETS professional and still want to um, yeah be part um, of the system and uh, modify mm -hmm. as their their needs changes as well and. Uh, Having the app module as an universal IoT KNX gateway with KNX router functionality on the market already, um, we thought uh, that would be the perfect match, and it worked. Mm -hmm. So, and we can uh, see the live demo by Jörg today. So, thank you very much, Jörg, up front, Welcome. and uh, looking forward to see you. Yes. All right. So, are you ready? I'm gonna handle the presentation to you, and you can demonstrate what it can be done. All right. Make presenter. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So you should see my uh, browser window now. Yes. Uh, with the surface Perfect. of the app module. Hello all together, uh, first of all. And yeah, thanks. thank you for introducing me and Let's take a look at the app module. First of all, we uh, I want to show you how to uh, activate the ETS inside server and want to show you the surface of the app module. Um, I logged into the app module and you can see here uh, the surface of the app module um, with the configuration um, for network settings, scanning settings, uh, where you can choose, for example, tunneling, routing, and so on. And you will find one point uh, or one folder with the ETS inside server. 
So right here you can activate the ETS inside a server. I still activated it. And um, when you act, uh, activated it, you can see, um, or you would need to install the license stick. So that means you need the a USB dongle, the ETS inside USB dongle, to um, get this um, ETS inside server running. Um, so that means you also need a license. Uh, the app module is only the ETS inside server. To get it uh, running, uh, you need uh, to buy or to purchase an ETS inside, inside license. And uh, where can you, will you get it? You will get it at my.kinex.org. And um, yeah, I bought one of these um, ETS inside licenses, uh, as you can see. And um, yeah, it's uh, usually the same like at ETS um, 5 Professional, for example. Um, you need to enter the uh, dongle ID, so that means the, uh, the serial number from this uh, USB dongle. Um, where can you find this number? It's shown up right here after you entered uh, or you plugged in the USB dongle. It's this number right here. Uh, just enter it here in this uh, free field, and uh, afterwards you can download a uh, CS uh, license file right here by clicking on this uh, blue labeled uh, KNX number. Afterwards, you can uh, go back to the app module and um, select this license uh, file and yeah after you have um, uh, clicked on okay or <laughs> pressed the button okay you will see uh, that uh, there's a license right here and uh, then your ETS inside server is running okay so that's um, running in the background um, Zap module itself also have got a lot of another functionality um, but uh, today we are talking first of all about the ETS inside server. Okay, so let's take a look at the ETS 5 Professional. Um, uh, for the ETS inside, there are two ways to um, to create a project. Um, first option would be uh, creating an ETS inside project completely with ETS inside. Uh, the other option is um, creating a KNX project with the ETS 5 Professional as a system integrator. And um, afterwards, you can um, grant uh, access to a different functional functionality to the user. And in this case, I want to show today. We are opening the ETS 5. Uh, you will find um, one folder ETS inside. Yeah, and here you you will find all the discovered servers that are um, in the same network. Yeah, for example, uh, this device right here. Yeah, it says IP address and um, uh, the name of the uh, project that's actually installed on it. Yeah, so that means that is the app module right here. If you compare these, I'm sorry. If you compare these um, IP addresses, you see. Okay, so that's uh, the device we are talking about. Yeah. Okay. Let's go into this uh, prepared project. I um, prepared a project named uh, Apartment, uh, a small uh, project. Let's take a look at the building structure. We have got an, um, uh, several rooms within this uh, apartment uh, a bathroom, bedroom, a dining room, and um, a hallway where the cabinet installed, kitchen, and so on. And uh, as you can see, I also created some functions. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you are um, actually using these functions, but um, if you don't, you see you can create new functions right here in the living room, for example, by adding a new function, maybe um, a switchable light. Yeah. Just name it like um, wall light, for example, and um, 
if you enter OK, you will find this a new function right here, and the ETS5 automatically uh, creates new group addresses, one for switching and one for status. Yeah, so uh, I just created a lot of these um, uh, functions. Uh, what about uh, devices? I created a, or I installed a switching actuator. I added a switching actuator uh, by Taben. Yeah, an eight-fold switching actuator with eight channels. And um, yeah, you will find here uh, different channels for the switching actuator. And um, right now I can choose within these parameters uh, which options or which functions as a customer, the user, um, will have access to, to change. So I can push on grant customer access. And right here I can choose, should he be able to change the channel functionality? Yeah, or should he be able to activate scenes or something like that? Yeah. And um, so the system integrator is choosing which, which functions uh, should the customer or the user be uh, um, be able to change. Yeah. For example, wind alarm shouldn't be a good option for the user or customer to change, but uh, maybe at the uh, push button, maybe that's a good idea to give them the possibility to change uh, the function from switching to uh, blinds or something like that. Yeah. So. Um, we could say, okay, let's give him the, opportunity, uh, the possibility to change um, these things right here so that he is able to change these things for all of these switches or buttons. Well, okay, so now I can um, finish these uh, grant customer access and um, right now it's prepared. Yeah, you see, you have, we have got a building structure. We have got um, two devices added right here. Yeah, how to go on? Um, next step would be going back to the main screen from ETS. So then I can right click on my uh, ETS, uh, on my ETS project, go to send to, and I'm not sending it to the archives, uh, but uh, to the ETS inside. So when I'm pushing on this send to ETS inside server, um, he will bring you all the discovered servers. Uh, we will find the server apartment and uh, when I press on next, uh, I need to enter the password of the server, send it or push on push on login, and uh, afterwards, I uh, the ETS five will say, okay, we need to close it. Okay, let us close this uh, project within the ETS five. Now it's uploading as a file to the ETS inside server. And yeah, how can we uh, get connected to the ETS inside server? Uh, there's an um, um, an app. Um, uh, available for Windows, there's one for iOS, and um, right now I use the Windows app to get connected to these um, to this ETS inside server. Yeah, so that's the main screen from the ETS inside. So um, he will also discover for ETS inside servers, and he find our apartment. So now I can choose uh, how I want to log in as a user or as an administrator. Let's choose administrator right now. Enter the password and say login. Okay, um, right here you can see the project overview where you can say, okay, uh, what's the project name, what's the status, and uh, when was it edited. Uh, and on the right upper side, you can see, uh, okay, I want to open the project. I want to modify some things. I've got a possibility to uh, go to diagnostics like an, um, a group monitor. I can choose the connections to, uh, to the ETS installation. I've got the possibility to set uh, up several things like um, updates or licenses. 
uh, the online catalog and and some troubleshooting I can also um, do. Okay, um, backup restore I will show you later. I can log out and there's also an help on this uh, app. Okay, right here you can see um, history entries, uh, what was done in which time. And we have got uh, also the possibility to add uh, Kinex secure devices. So in this case, you would uh, need to enter the uh, um, FDSK. So that means the certificate for this um, Kinex secure devices right here. Maybe like uh, you have seen it in the ETS 5 before. It's, it's the same uh, thing at the end. But let us now open this project. Okay, and uh, when I when you open the project, you first of all see on the left hand side all the rooms that I created within the ETS 5, um, the bathroom, bedroom, and so on. And uh, if you push on one of these things, maybe the hallway, uh, you will find uh, the uh, devices, maybe, or in this case, the cabinet. Um, if I choose the cabinet, he will show me all the devices and, uh, and functions that I created within this room uh, or within this cabinet. In this case, um, there's a switching actuator installed and um, the ETS inside will show me that right here. Okay, um, let us go back. Oops. Okay. If you are, uh, if you are not, if you didn't choose one of these rooms, it will show you all the devices that are installed right here in this apartment, and it will show you if you push on functions. <coughs> I'm sorry, um, all the functions that we created or that I created within. I go back for short within the ETS inside. So maybe these functions right here, the so bonsai elimination, the ceiling lights, and so on. <coughs> you will, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, you will uh, get shown here. And if I open one of these uh, functions, maybe the bonsai elimination, you will find uh, also needed uh, group addresses, one for switching, status, dimming, and the value. Yeah. But uh, you see, there are no objects linked right here. So that means uh, we prepared all that we need so that um, maybe we, uh, by ourselves, or also a user or customer, could um, connect all the devices together. OK. So um, let's say we want to switch one of these lights, maybe the ceiling lights in the living room. Yeah, so let's take a look in the living room. Uh, what will we find in the living room? In the living room, we have one device. So that's uh, this four-fold uh, four switch button. Yes, and if I open these uh, four times um, push button, I can say, okay, let me sh uh, show me please uh, all the objects. You see, there's for each of these uh, buttons one communication object, object for switching. In the parameters, I can choose uh, how this uh, uh, button should work. Should it be a switching or dimming or something like that? Let's choose switching for the moment. And um, see status LED I want to use as an indicating LED. So that means if there's an, uh, see, uh, if the light is switched on, the LED will also let, um, be lighted. Okay, so now I can find for this first um, button uh, the switching and the status uh, communication object. Now let's begin with the switching communication object on the right hand side and can see groups. And here I can choose now uh, which group do I want to. Uh, get connected at this. Okay, and you will find, for example, in the kitchen, two lights, in the living room, you will find, you see, uh, bonsai illumination, blinds, and ceiling lights. And if I choose ceiling lights, I can also choose afterwards the correct uh, group address. 
Same again for the status. Blank with living room, ceiling lights and status group address. Okay, so right now the, uh, the push button is done for the moment. It's not programmed right now, but uh, we prepared everything for it. And yeah, next thing is connecting the uh, switching activator uh, with the same group addresses. So let's open these communication objects uh, from the switching activator and uh, let's choose uh, the first channel for us set right now. Link with the correct group address, living room, ceiling lights, switching. And where's the feedback? You will find the feedback right here. Channel one, feedback. Link with living room, ceiling lights and status. Okay, so that's just one function right now. It's just a switching light for the moment. And uh, let's see uh, uh, how I can uh, bring it to the devices right now. Um, how can I go on? Yeah, you will find both devices right here. And on the upper right side, uh, you could uh, say, okay, download to the devices, but before I can download, I would need to uh, connect to the right uh, device or to, to the ETS in, uh, to the ETS installation. And um, if you push on connections, it's the same like you would um, do it in the ETS 5. Um, at this point right here, you can also choose a correct interface. And all the interfaces you, that you get shown here, you will find as well in the ETS inside. So um, I choose the app module because it's also a tunneling and Kinex NetAP tunneling device. And uh, if I choose it, it shown me the correct individual address right here. Back to the project. And right now I can say download these two devices. So um, you see, um, there are two devices pending, the switching activator and the fourfold push button. Yeah, and right now I need to push the programming button on the first device, that's the switching activator. Right now I'm pushing on it. And afterwards, it's first of all programming the individual adverts and afterwards the application. This is a real live uh, demo, <laughs> yes, as you can um, see. You are still at 9,600 uh, bits per second. <laughs> um, so it just take a few seconds. Maybe we can have some music in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, next, next feature. Next feature. A jeopardy melody. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Next thing is the push button. So for how long you've been working with uh, ETS Insight, uh, Jer? It's ETS Insight. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Is that something you uh, learned recently or? Yes, learning by doing recently. Because, because you do very, uh, you seem very acquainted with the tool. Okay. Um, yeah, I think if you are used, uh, if you used uh, ETS 5 before a lot of times and um, I'm mm -hmm. using it for, uh, a lot of years right now, and also ETS4, mm -hmm. uh, you know um, what you uh, thought about creating ETS insights and um, how it's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, this is this is one of the advantages of the ETS insights. So it's particularly easy to use. So that's yes. what is thought for. Mm -hmm. right. 
yeah um, it's really easy to use because um, you don't need to switch between a lot of windows and um, yeah so it's a good solution for um, people that are starting with CTS yeah to get into mm -hmm. uh, building automation yeah that's mm -hmm. right okay um, yeah uh, so your devices are programmed right now and now I can for example click on diagnostics and um, so that's a group monitor like uh, it's uh, in ETS professional included too and now I started a communication to this um, uh, ETS installa installation and if I push the button right now yeah, switch on we will find right here okay so there was a switching um, switching uh, of the button uh, you can see here and um, the feedback of the switching actuator on and off yeah, both directions okay mm -hmm. all right so you see that it's working and it's really easy to uh, connect uh, these devices yeah okay next thing would be okay um, what about modifying it yeah, so maybe you created uh, these um, or you programmed all of these devices for your user, for your uh, customer, and afterwards he's changing something. Maybe he is changing the functionality in the living room. Maybe he said, okay, um, for the four fold switch, he's changing the parameters because he wants to switch on the left hand side uh, off and on the other side he wants to switch it on so he changed the parameters yeah um, and then he you uh, he would say okay download this device as so i was changing at the uh, four fold push button okay and he was doing it by himself um, the integrator is not um, involved in this and uh, maybe a lot of months or years later um, the user or customer um, wants to get something more um, things that maybe the ETS insights not able to um, um, get done um, maybe you need to um, do complex logics or something like that and then what what can we do then in this case so the integrator would go to ETS 5 insight uh, to the ETS5 professional, I'm sorry. And on the ETS Insight folder, you, he can say, okay, please download the actual project from this ETS Insight server. So then he needs to enter the password. And right now the ETS5 is downloading the correct file from the ETS Insight server. Okay, or write a project. And then he can open it and uh, do, see, do his changes. And um, maybe uh, he will do changes right here in the ETS 5 and bring it back then to the ETS insights, like you, you have seen it before. Or he is also able to program the devices within the ETS 5. Okay. So you see, it's, it's bi-directional. We can send it to the ETS Insight server, but we can also um, download the file from the ETS Insights. That means the advantage here is the customer, the user, is all the time he has got the project, the actual project on his ETS Insight server. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, next thing is a backup. Yeah. How is it working with a backup? So that means uh, maybe something's wrong with the ETS Insight server. So you can create also a backup uh, from your ETS Insight file. Um, let's uh, take a look uh, right here in the ETS Insight. You've got this button for backup and restore. Create a project backup. Yeah. So that means uh, right now I would create a backup. Maybe uh test it as a name as a comment I proceed and uh yeah you will find a cets inside server right here so that is the device from uh, bab technology uh, create backup right there uh, the transfer is completed and uh, we can also check that if you go back to the surface from the 
app module. So if I go back to the app module, to the configuration, to the ETS inside server, I will find this backup, backup right here. Yeah. So that's my backup file and I can download it right here uh, to save it uh, at my desktop, for example. Okay. So backup and restore is the same. I can also upload a backup right into the ETS inside server backwards. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Jerk, uh, because of time yeah. constraints, we need to start uh, wrapping up. Uh, maybe you want to show us advantages of having the tool integrated, uh, the ETS inside server uh, integrated in the app module. Uh, yes. Do you want to show us? Hmm. The opportunities of uh, or the bunch of chests right here. Okay, um, right now we have seen uh, the ETS inside server functionality from the app module, but the app module itself is not only an ETS inside server or an or an um, KNX NetIP tunneling uh, device or a routing device. Um, it's also a, uh, a device that can connect uh, several protocols uh, to KNX. For example, like you can see here, access cameras or um, um, Amazon Alexa and Denon uh, receivers, um, routers, um, how many devices, um, and you see there are a lot of devices and a lot of apps that you can install um, Special, uh, specialized for your user or customer uh, on this device. So that means there are a lot of tools available or apps available in the market. And um, yeah, you can see, you can do it very special for your uh, user. And right now I want to show you how to connect, for example, the Philips U lights or Zigbee lights uh, to KNX. Yeah, let's say, okay, Philips U control. Um, let me delete that very short, or we don't need to delete it. Um, I created one of these um, instances or so one light, for example, the bonsai illumination. And um, if I go on edit the parameters, uh, I can say, okay, what is the instance name? Yeah, instance name would be bonsai illumination, for example. Uh, next step would be choosing the um, um, Philips U bridge, for example. You, you will find one here right now with the IP address. And uh, after you authorized uh, the uh, KNX, uh, the BRB technology GMBH app module uh, to use the data from the uh, Philips U bridge, it will show you all the lights that are installed or connected to this Philips U bridge, for example, the bonsai. Next thing is connecting all the uh, addresses to the device. So it means you can enter manually group addresses right here for switching in on and off, or you can choose uh, the group addresses that you um, imported to the app module before. Yeah, so you can choose the right uh, group address right here. Let me do just that manually switching and feedback for example yeah two group addresses and you see you can do a lot of things you can uh, choose uh, how to uh, what's the color and what's the color temperature and so on and that's just a possibility for uh, another protocol to get it connected to um, KNX so that was saved right now and right now it would work if I switch the button on and off I will get, uh, I will have the possibility to switch on and off my two uh, or my bonsai illumination, uh, illumination that's running on Philips U as on Zigbee. Okay, um, you see there are a lot of apps um, available for it. So uh, with the app module, you have a device that is um, that has got a lot of the advantages. For example, the ETS inside server, but all, uh, but also all the other protocols that you can connect to the KNX. So, well, um, I'm done for this uh, little webinar. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and mm -hmm. uh, thanks for your time. Excellent. No, thank uh, you very much. Uh, carrying, carrying out a live demo is never easy and definitely you manage very well. So thank you very much, Jörg.
And uh, thank you very much, Stefan, for all the support to make this happen. I trust that uh, the participants really enjoy this live demo. And uh, we will now answer their questions and the Q&A uh, session. So thank you very much. Uh, keep well. And I hope you enjoy the ETS Inside server for many years. OK, so thank you. You too. Thank you very much. And uh, thank, thank you, you for giving us the Thanks. opportunity. Bye. Bye-bye. Our pleasure. Cheers. Bye. Ciao.